This is Dan Abbott. I'm making this video from my mechanical design class at Southern Maine Community College and I want to talk about profile as a geometric tolerance. Uh, we have one of the NIMS drawings here that the precision machining students you have to make and there's been a question about what does it mean when you have a profile control that looks like this. Let's start first with a profile control that looks like this which is much more common. That's telling you for that slot that the inside face of that slot going all the way around and all the way around because that circle is there. Otherwise, it would only be controlling the arc. So in this case, the all-around symbol means all the way around the inside of that slot has a profile tolerance of 0 0.006 in reference to A as the primary, E as the secondary, D as the tertiary datums. So the first thing you have to do is to place this thing into a framework where A is the first thing that's controlled, which is the top surface. E is the second thing that's controlled, which is this front surface. And then D, the side over here, is the third thing that's controlled. So that locks this piece into place when it's been inspected. And locking it into place means all six degrees of freedom have been controlled. Now, what does this mean? That means if we took, and in this case, this is bilateral because it doesn't indicate otherwise. We need to create a tolerance zone that's based on the perfect shape of that slot where it gets offset out three millimeters, offset in three millimeters from perfection. So the width of the zone itself is six all the way around. Now if that slot's face falls completely inside that tolerance zone, it's within tolerance. Now down here we have what's called a composite positional, I mean I'm sorry, I said positional because normally composite frames are applied to position when you have a pattern of holes or a pattern of some kind. In this case though it's a composite frame that's applied to that raised boss that comes up from the base. So now the shape we're looking at is the shape all the way around the raised boss like this. Now I want to make sure that it's clear what I'm talking about. So here it is with the skewed version of the raised boss which I've got on here so it can move around. Of course, it's all going to be one piece when you manufacture it. But we're really talking about this as a feature. So the red part of this is the surface that's being controlled by that arrow because it's touching right here. Again, it has the all-around symbol. It doesn't mean all over it. It doesn't have anything to do with the top surface. It has to do only with that ribbon around the outside perimeter. It's got two controls because it's being it's controlling the shape and the position of this based on two different tolerance zones. The first one is the same as we had up here where you have a um, feature control frame calling out a primary, secondary, and tertiary datum in that first frame, which means this has to be entirely controlled in all six degrees of freedom by first establishing datum A by putting it on a surface plate or by doing something, probably a surface plate, then controlling datum E as a secondary by having two points of contact or an angle plate. Then you have to control datum D, the one over here, with one point of contact or another angle, uh, contact or another angle plate. And when you're done, this part can't move. That's when this gets tested on the outside. So you have a gauge of some kind that drops over it. However, it's a fairly large tolerance zone. 0 0.02 again it's, it's going to be bilateral because it doesn't indicate otherwise here unequal distribution of the profile tolerance can be called out but that's not what's happening here so you'd have 10 thou in 10 thou out fairly wide tolerance band and then once you've locked this in position this whole thing has to fit inside that band well the reality is that the part itself, the boss, could actually be skewed or slightly out of position and still work. So now you have another tolerance zone, which is tighter. This one is 6 thou, similar to this one. So you'd offset 3 and 3. But you don't have to control it for all three. The part's still free to move up and down because you've removed the tertiary datum. It's possible even to have a third one. So what it's saying is this, if you're looking straight down at this, first we have to establish that this thing is in the right position. It can be a little skewed, whatever, but it has to be in the right position. Now as long as that fits entirely inside, and I've exaggerated this obviously, inside that tolerance zone of 20 thou, now you take a separate 
measure of just the raised boss, completely ignoring what's going on over here, and instead control it by the green and that light blue, then this now has to actually fit inside of that so that the shape is more accurate, but it still was possible once it first fit in for it to be moving up and down a little. I don't mean moving because it's all one piece, but to be out of position up and down. Fact is, you could have a third frame here. You could have up to three. Now we're going to go look at the pocket guide. Here's the pocket guide that has uh, examples of all these things. And here's a case where you have a profile of a surface as composite, and it goes all the way down to the to the third frame. So here you have an opening, or it's a hole, that could be the same as a raised boss. In the first place, you're saying, listen, when you control everything, when you have A, B, and C all tied down so this part cannot move at all, then this shape, and this in case it's one millimeter, that shape has to fit inside a one millimeter um, tolerance zone when locked in that position. So you're controlling the location of this on that base. And also, if you get rid of one of the other feature control frames, so you get rid of, I'm sorry, one of the other um, datums, so now you're talking about just a primary and a secondary datum. That allows a little bit of positional um, being out of position relative to C. C is this one right here. So that means this one's no longer controlled, so that can move back and forth somewhat. Um, the orientation of that hole, perpendicularity to, to A and perpendicularity, where's B? Yeah, and then this had this surface being parallel to B. That's a tighter control. Not a lot tighter, but a little bit tighter control. That just means that the shape of this is still really critical, but you don't have to gauge the shape using all three datums. The actual final control in the shape is a tight control, 0.2 millimeters, referencing only A. What you're really saying is, based on A, this thing had better be perpendicular to A, everything fits in there, the entire size of the tolerance zone is 0.2, but it can also shift around a little bit and be slightly out of position relative to C because you've got a larger control for A and B. And then at the very top, the whole location of this when referencing everything, all three of the um, datums, that's an even a bigger tolerance zone. Not very common, by the way, generally speaking, on prof profile, you're going to have a single frame. But when you do have one, that's what it means. And again, these numbers have to get smaller. Otherwise, it's not logical. If the overall actual shape had a larger frame, a larger tolerance zone than these others, then these others would be meaningless. So when you have a composite frame for this or for position, the numbers always get smaller. And the key is right here. That's the actual control of the shape. Everything else is really more controlling the orientation and the location. If there's no third frame, they're all controlling the orientation and the location, but the tightest one is the one that controls the shape itself. This is a little confusing, I know, especially when you look at the illustration of what it means, because the interpretation shows you three separate nested tolerance zones. And then it says the part itself has to fall entirely inside that smallest of the nested tolerance zones, but then that entire zone can move inside the next larger zone, which can move inside the next larger zone. This is a lot easier to visualize, I think, when you have a pattern of holes, where you're saying, oh, I have a hole pattern with six bolt holes, and the entire pattern can shift around a little bit, but the spacing between the holes has to be accurate enough to go over the studs that it's designed to go over, but it can still do that and have the entire pattern out of position. This is similar using a boss or a hole instead of a pattern of holes, but I know it's a little harder to, to get a, uh, a handle on.